When you hear never again, you expect it to really be never again. The MPP government said never again was Ghana going to go back to the IMF, at least not under its watch. Well, it appears our party, which is in government now, is swallowing its own words with the decision to go back to the IMF. On Face to Face today, I'm going to engage someone who has a PhD in economics and he specializes on, or in rather, macroeconomics, international macroeconomics, monetary economics, and econometrics. He's going to help me make sense of our decision to go back to the IMF and what the political undertones would be, plus how we are going to make sure when we come back from IMF, we truly would never again go. My name is Umaru Sandamaru. You're welcome to Face to Face. My guest served as a member of parliament for two consecutive times for the people of Koforidua. The constituency is called New Jabin South. He was chairman of the finance committee of parliament, but he's no more in parliament. The Honorable Dr. Mark Esibeyeba, you're welcome to Face to Face. Yeah, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Ah, you look, you look nice for someone who is in opposition, you know? or you're not in opposition. Maybe, maybe you meant opposition in power. Opposition in power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> You're doing well, aren't you? Yes, yes, uh, yes. We'll talk about life outside parliament, life outside politics. I was shocked, maybe hurt and embarrassed that we were going back to the IMF after all we heard about the IMF. Were you also shocked? Okay, no, you can't be shocked. You told me that we should go to IMF some months ago instead of going for the E-Levy. So for you, this is what we should have done long ago. Um, I wasn't against the E-Levy just for... Uh, to correct that, I said on top of the E levy, maybe we should run to the fund because in January, um, Fitch downgraded Ghana, and then following up uh, in February to Moody's also downgraded us. So, if you looked at the, the fiscal numbers, our debt situation, the deficit, and you add the downgrade at the time, I didn't see any clear path to uh, restoring macroeconomic stability. And so maybe uh, it's come six months later, but better late than never. At what point do you say, as a country, we need IMF intervention? And what are the key elements that you should look out for? And are these elements currently present? So um, presently, uh, inflation hovers around 276 government is borrowing at about 27 percent on a weekly basis uh, treasury bills over around 27 percent these are unsustainable we can't go to the international capital market we cannot we've been there even 2021 we're there but 2022 we can't go there so if you can go to the international capital market badly needed forex foreign exchange that you need to import food uh, medicines, crude, uh, it's unavailable. So your reserve position is deteriorating. So in simple language, even if we want to borrow, we cannot from anybody else because they will say that we don't look good. Yes. So for, we, we go for, uh, to the international capital market, uh, the euro bond market to borrow. We've been there since 2018, 2018, 19, 20, 21, four years running. And so we would normally bring in about $3 billion dollars and so we have the forex that we need to do the things we want to do. Following the downgrade, it means now we couldn't go in the sense that we're going to borrow at, say, 11-12%. So it, it didn't make sense to go. Now we have been trying on the bilateral side, say, country-to-country -country borrowing. It's also not coming. The minister promised to bring in some $2 billion a long time ago. It hasn't materialized. There is a, a loan agreement, syndicated one, $1 billion dollars sitting in parliament now it hasn't passed the sense i get is that the lenders want comfort from a fund program so if you are in a fund program then they would lend to you because you'll be disciplined so if we didn't go to the imf um, the economy was going to go down a slide down 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 the sri lanka situation so you cannot do without the fund at this time no that's why any, that's why we have run there you don't have any option no People who think we could do homegrown solutions, it doesn't work that way. 
are, are as so when we, when we said we are going to do production from taxation, is that not something we should pos possibly work on now? Would that not save us? Yeah, but uh, the rhetoric hasn't been matched by the deeds, you know. So how much production has gone on? Um, the numbers don't add up. The revenues haven't come. The e levy was supposed to generate 6.9 billion. I don't think we'll even do a billion uh, cities this year. So there's a shortfall. To start with, you are running a, a deficit. Your revenue for the whole year would be about 80 billion cities. And then your expenditure over 100 and something billion cities. That's 80 billion revenue. About 6.9 of it is e levy. You won't realize it. The benchmark restoration, you didn't do it. So your 80 billion tax revenue, about 10 billion of it won't come in. So if you don't go to the fund for support. Now, the fund, apart from the lending that comes from the fund, you would also, there's a catalytic effect. So the, the other countries that would also give you money because you are in a program with the fund. If you are not with the fund, they will not give you money. So that's a conspiracy then, and that would not be fair, would it? If you put People your, can even call it neo-colonialism. If you put your house in order, you don't need the fund. So the U.S. is not running to the fund. Other countries are not running to the fund. So if your house is in order, maybe we thought our house was in order. That's why government spokespersons were saying that we don't need the IMF, uh, no matter what happens. But uh, reality has set in, and uh, it's good that we are now uh, dealing with the fund. Let's talk about this house in order. When did we start losing it? I mean, we came out of the fund in 2018. 2019. 2019. April, April 2019. So that's just three years ago, less than three years. Yes. Mahama took us there because they wanted cre policy credibility and all of yeah. that. So the fund was shepherding us for, for five years. Or was it three years? Four. 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 Four, years. four years. So that concluded and we were told never again. When did we start slipping back to have gone back to the IMF now? So um, some have attributed some of these to the uh, pandemic, yes, and then of course the Ukraine-Russian war. But the war started in February of 2022, 20, uh, I think yes. 24th, February 2022. Yeah. By January, uh, fish had downgraded us. So we, we, our, our we downgrade had, had nothing to do with the war. We, we had, they couldn't have downgraded us anticipating the yeah. Russia-Ukraine war. So yes, the pandemic. But if you look at how we were able to manage the pandemic and then the consequences thereof. I don't think uh, all of it is attributable to the pandemic and then uh, the war. I think election year slippages once again read its head. All the free free things that we enjoyed. Okay, government spending went into the roof. The free water, free electricity, the cooked meals, the COVID support and all that that were given out. I think I thought as parliament you passed a law that bad government from spending above a certain threshold. Yeah, the, def the, the law, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Act says yes. that the deficit for every, uh, each year shall not exceed 5%. But then you can set it aside. So, mind you, the pandemic uh, was so in you went back and said So, that, yeah, okay. government came to parliament to set aside And that, said that allow uh, us to spend more. Yes, because the, 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 the Act says that in times of emergency or uh, in a sense when we had a pandemic you can was, lift it yes, and, yes but the government says the reason we are going to imf is a twin problem of russia ukraine and covid 19. they said it has nothing to do with internal mismanagement what is your own reading of the books well, the good thing about uh, having a fund program is that uh, we would have to open our books so when the fund comes in uh, we, we, we would have to we would know the arrears situation for instance I do not know how much arrears uh, sits in government books. So well, arrears means what? Arrears are uh, contracts that have been done and, and not then paid contractors for. have not been paid. So these are road contractors, non-road contractors, suppliers. So the arrears uh, situation. In 2017, arrears that the MPP uh, inherited was 5.7 billion CDs. Money that had to be paid back to people, yes. which had not been paid. Yes. So uh, I want to know the arrears now. Then. If, for instance, the areas, by my estimation, it will be about 40 billion. Wow. Yes. So how can you tell me that? Uh, and this will be domestic or international? Those, well? domestic, those ones are uh, debts we are uh, paid. Those ones are in, in the budget. 
Okay, the so, interest payment, the amortization of principles, those ones are captured here. But the arrears, it has not been captured here. That's so this is different from the debt that has been put around 400 billion. 400 million, the, 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 the public debt. This yes. is different. The arrears is different the from the public is, debt. It's not part of it. And this is so. And, and these have to be audited because some of it we don't even know. Government might not even know because people are sitting in their ministries, Ministry of Health, signing contracts, awarding contracts here and there, do this, supply this. Consultants. Yes, so we have to audit all of these to know the areas, the position. And, 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 and that would be huge. But you see, I still wanted you to explain to me so if it was not COVID 19 and Ukraine, which the government has consistently drummed since on Friday it announced that it was going to go to the IMF. What else went wrong where? That's what I'm saying. The election year slippage, okay, which we always So see. this was before COVID, or maybe during COVID, yes. So, so COVID, uh, I, I, I want to uh, agree that COVID has contributed to this. At the time Ghana was being downgraded in January, there was no war. Okay, so leave the war bit out. When Ghana was being downgraded by Fitch in January, <laughs> Russia and Ukraine were not at war. But we didn't go to IMF in January. We didn't go in February. We went, we went in June, almost July. We are not even at the IMF. Yes, but I'm saying we are now going to the IMF in July, which means that it is because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which came to perhaps, you know, maybe the, 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 the last straw that broke the camel's back. We, we have not been very careful in getting to the fan, okay? We should be careful about negotiating a, a program. The fund went to Sri Lanka for 10 days. There was no agreement. So they coming in here does not mean that uh, there's going to be a program. It's not automatic. No. That's what I'm saying. The rhetoric, the posturing, we have to slow things down. They can come here and say, well, if you are not ready to really conceal all the data, uh, to reveal all the data, to open all the books, to come clean, we, we are not going to do it. But do they not already have all these books? Don't we file all these books to them as You see, there, there's been some back and forth in some of these reports. You recall under the line, below the line, some of mm -hmm. these. I had uh, my own position that put it above the line. Capture it in the budget. Then we all know that that, that was when the financial sector, clean up, energy sector, cost. Uh, we debated whether to put this below the line in the budget or above the line. Eventually, the, that was the fund's position that we have to put it above the line. That means it's captured in the annual budget. Mm -hmm. and so we know the total debt uh, position, the deficit and all that. Eventually we got there. For two years we huddled with the fund whether to include it as part of the, de uh, uh, the deficit uh, for the year. Even though we captured it as part of the debt, it wasn't part of the annual deficit. But eventually we got there. So there are a few things, if you uh, read the Article 4 reports from the fund 2021. There are a few things that they are disagreeing. For example, energy sector debts. I don't know. The last time we did uh, an auditing of energy sector debts, 2018, was some 10 billion. Thereafter, we did the S lab bond. What is the energy sector debt position right now? We have to know all of these, and that's what they are going to So when they come in and then they don't, they don't get the data that uh, uh, they want and people are not transparent, they will go back. I'll ask you more about the posturing, but let's try and settle a few of other things. How way back should we have gone to the fund? Or you think this is the right time? Because there are people who think that we should have gone long ago but yeah, because of the obstinate I, nature of but government. I, I, I think that argument, we've gone past that stage. Now uh, uh, we are beginning negotiations, but whether we should have gone earlier. Yeah, but would uh, that not have solved, maybe saved us? Because maybe it's like the ship has sunk before you went for a rescue. Yeah, maybe of... six months earlier, because negotiations take minimum four to six months to, to reach an agreement and to sign on to a program. Minimum, minimum four to six months. So we should have been there like January or even December of last year. Maybe. Preparing maybe. the ground. Yes. Because um, our next budget uh, will be presented in November. So if we are able to have an agreement in place, then that should feed into the, the next budget. The 2023 budget to be presented in November. How does that damage us, the non-visitation to IMF at an early stage? What does that, have, what, what does that portend? Oh, um, the fiscal situation has deteriorated and it has gotten to uh, a point that uh, it was 
also deteriorating the monetary and we see it in the currency. The currency is weak. I don't know, is it 8.2 or something? It's weak. Yeah. There are things that people have to be upfront with. If I'm exchanging one dollar for 8.2 CDs and in December it was six CDs to the dollar, it has weakened. Okay, look at inflation. Inflation is 27.6 percent. I don't think we've seen the end of the uh, food inflation is even worse. Uh, utility uh, costs are going to uh, uh, tariffs are going to be increased very soon. Okay, so it means that we'll see an upsurge in inflation again. So if you had 1,000 Ghana cities uh, beginning of the year and you, you say uh, you're a prudent guy, so you, I'm keeping my 1,000 cities under my pillow. I don't spend rough, rough, okay? By end year, if inflation is 30%, that your 1,000 cities is now 700 cities. That's the purchasing power. 30% uh, eroded by inflation. And then there's lots of taxes. That government. I'm, I'm going to ask you how government is going to deal with this, but there's also petroleum products price also on the side, yeah. which is all part of the general mix. When people here, and I'm referring to people outside Ghana, hear that Ghana has gone to the IMF, what does it say to our economy? Does it mean we have a weak economy? No, 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 no. That, that's why I said, if I'm finance minister, I'll pack the economy at the IMF. It brings discipline. Explain that. Okay, so. From 2015 to 2019, we're under a fund program. All the successes the MPP chugged 2017 to 2019, they chugged all those successes under a fund program. Which is a Mahama fund program. Yes, but that program was supposed to end 2018 and the MPP extended, extended it by one year. Okay. So this means that you have said to the IMF that class prefects don't leave, stay, even yeah. though Mahama signed for you to leave last, he wants you to stay. We couldn't have left because they don't deal with governments, they deal with countries. Okay. So once... So uh, they didn't care who's, who's yes. in power. Okay, but you, you, you wanted to leave on a, on a good note. So they stay to keep us in check. Yes. So that's why we have the successes we reported at yes. the time. Yes, I, I, I argue that when the IMF are in town, we get things done right. Okay, so if you go back to the... Uh, the program we, we had under our Tamils, 2009 to 2012, fantastic. The uh, uh, macro ind indices at the time, the best we've seen in a long time, between uh, 2009 to 2012. The moment the fund left in June 2012, everything uh, went bisect, okay? So if you were finance minister, I'll you would pack, the, I'll pack economy the economy at the IMF. The fund. Yeah. So that everything you refer to IMF. Yes, they if, are there. If they say, oh, we are members of the fund. What is this big deal about IMF, IMF? People don't understand. The 17th time will not be the last. We'll be going to the IMF and going and going again. There's really? nothing wrong. What's wrong with being You're at a the fund? You're a member of the MPP that vowed. That but the MPP is at the fund right now. <laughs> <laughs> the MPP is at the fund right now. Isn't it? Kufo but, but, was there. Kufo yes. was there. 2001 mm -hmm. to 2006. Fantastic record. Before we left 2006, what, did, what happened? We lost 2008 elections. Isn't it? But where were people like you when all the MP people were saying we would never go to IMF? Mahama is a useless guy for going to IMF. NDC has, and that we would never go. Where were you? Why didn't you say something contrary? Because the records show that it's an official position of your party that IMF I don't think it's a, it was the official position. Because if, if you understand the dealings with the IMF, all member countries of the IMF submitted themselves to annual reviews. Even the US, the IMF goes there, looks into their books. They were here last year, Article 4. So every year, whether we have a program or not, the IMF are here. They offer technical assistance. They support GRE. They support the Bank of Ghana. They support government institutions, you know, public sector reform. So they are always with us. So this idea of we won't go to the IMF. It means you don't understand what you are talking so about. So for you, when the, the talk was being made, in fact, as recently as May, the Minister of 2020, Financing... when the COVID struck, they gave us $1 billion. Yes. We won't go to the IMF, but we have taken their $1 billion 2020. 2021, they did SDR allocation. They gave us another $1 billion. And we collected it. 2022, we were going for money. They say, if you don't have a program, we won't give you money. So that's why we had to then open our Yes, hands they, they, they had the facility. Other countries were assessing 2022. We're going back to assess. They say no. But you can't permanently pack your economy at the IMF 
even though you are a member, other people are not there. So why should you be the guy who is put... Tell, me, tell me my sins if I'm there. Tell me what is wrong with me. Your there. sins is that when Nkrumah said that black man was capable of managing his own like, affairs 60 years plus ago, mm. we believe that we can. I mean, we've gone there 17 times. If we can't... That's what I'm land, telling you. Then we should go back under colonialism. No, huh? no. So no. we are a colonialist state governed by no. the IMF. So the IMF... That's what it will mean. The if IMF you is like the Bank of Ghana to all countries. Mm -hmm. But not all countries are there. But they are all members. Yes, but they are not there. So, so you, you fall on them for assistance. You, uh, 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 see this analogy. Mm -hmm. We borrow on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Ghana, this Friday, there will be an auction. We will borrow, uh, borrow about 1 billion cities. Last week, we borrowed. Every Friday, we go for auction at the Bank of Ghana. We borrow money. We borrow at 27%. Okay? If you go to the fund right now and they give us $1 billion, it will be interest-free, 0%. They will give us a five-year moratorium and give us 25 years to repay. So for every, due to the opportunity cost, every borrowing we do here, it is some uh, uh, cost to us because if we are gone for IMF... It would have like, pushed us better. Hmm? So if I say I'll pack my economy there, if I'm borrowing $20 billion, uh, dollars and the fund will give all of it to me at zero percent. Doesn't make sense. So the IMF, the anti-IMF talk was political. Well, I, I, I made my position clear, and I think I've made it clear that I, will, looking at what I've seen with the Ghanaian economy, if I'm finance minister, I'll pack the economy uh, uh, there and with the fund. So all those senseless borrowings, high interest rates, I'd rather be borrowing from them. Because you use them as a cover. So, uh, uh, what better way to refinance your debt than borrowing? Please stay with me. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandam, and I'm here with Dr. Marcus Ibeboa. He was chairman of the Finance Committee. You can see he's the one who uh, supervised the, the first budget of the Akufado government when it was brought before the House of Parliament, the House Committee on Finance. And he's former MP for New Job in South. We're having a discussion around the IMF, and you've heard his own view there. Being at the IMF is not a sin, and he doesn't mind putting his economy at the IMF and asking it to help him with supervision. The current finance minister, though, Ken Oforiata, had said no. Now the government, through Nana Adanko Akufad, has ordered him to go to the IMF. What should be the posturing of our negotiation? That's the next conversation when we come back. Please stay. You welcome back to Face to Face. Uh, we're discussing the state of the economy, the decision to go to the IMF. My guest... Is Dr. Mark Esibe Yeboa. Now that we have decided to open negotiations with the IMF, the government has issued a statement that the IMF team is coming to town. IMF itself has issued a statement that they are coming to town to begin negotiations. What should be our strategy going into that negotiation? During the Mahama time, Setekba and the NDC went to Senchi. They did what they called the Senchi Consensus, which is what they presented. We haven't seen a similar thing now. Can you have a program that has not necessarily been discussed generally like the one that happened uh, the last? The, the, uh, our relationship with the fund has changed. Uh, the, the era when they would impose things on us is, 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 is long gone, okay? So we have to put together what we call a letter of intent. We have to put a letter of intent which will detail the policy actions we want to take and then present it to them. So it's not as if they are coming to with a set of prescription. Ah, so they don't impose conditionalities no, 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 as we no, no. see. All the conditions that you've heard in the past. For example, freeze on hiring. We wrote it. In we our told them that we want In our policy of intent that there will be a freeze on hiring. For example, when we uh, did asset quality review uh, of the banks in 2015, it was in there. So our policy uh, actions will be put in a letter of intent. So we will detail everyone. For instance, we can say that okay, we want we want to roll out electronic VAT. Then we will we, we'll give timelines by so so and so. We want to collect property rates efficiently. Then we we'll put a timeline. We want to scrap school feeding, for example. We we'll put a timeline. So we will put a letter of intent together. Then they will come and vet it. Okay, so. Um, so it's a package you present that is imposed mm -hmm. on you. It's not a strange package yeah. that is brought from Washington DC and given no, no, to you. No, no. So they, they, but they, then they will sit down with you. And okay. agree to some... That's their staff. So staff level. So those who are coming, we call them uh, IMF staff. So when we... That's why I said it takes between four to six months. When we have reached an agreement, 
on our letter of intent, then that becomes a staff level agreement. Okay. That's why I said uh, the fund went to Sri Lanka. Their letter of intent that was disagreed. Th there was no agreement. Okay, so they are coming to sit down. So what, what you call the Sinti consensus uh, metamorphosed into a letter of, of intent, intent, which they will sit down. Then they would also recommend a few that, well, this one, I don't think it's, it, it's something you should have done anyways. Okay. And this, so we we'll agree and that letter of in intent will become a staff level agreement staff level agreement then that staff level agreement now goes to the board imf board for board approval okay so so when they approve that then it becomes a deal a then program, we can now yeah, start so, so even a staff level agreement has not started no even a staff level agreement can be rejected by the board okay but okay. you 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 think that the staff level agreement is put together by imf staff mm -hmm. and their directors would be shepherding it and all that so to all intents and purposes, a staff level agreement would be approved by the board. Currently, we do not know what the letter of intent of the government. No, is. I, I think I think the ministry, uh, the Ministry of Finance has fantastic staff over there who do these things. Dr. Alasa, Arkes, Patrick Nomu, Eva, and Co. So they've been there and they know what they do. So, so they know the procedure. Yes, but we call these prior actions. There are prior actions that uh, the fund would demand before your letter of intent becomes a staff level. So there are prior actions, and that's when the staff, uh, the fund can come in very hard, that like these prior actions, this, what you are seeing uh, in your um, letter of intent, put action to it before we, we, we agree. Uh, wow, so point. that's like the primary level. Yeah. So if, I mean, show working or prove that you really would be committed to exactly. what you're doing exactly. before they even go for it. If you were in charge of the Ministry of Finance or in charge of our finance space and you are going to the IMF now, what are the things you're going to say to the IMF? What would you remove and what would you recommend? So, um, government has a number of um, uh, programs, uh, uh, presidential initiatives that it's run. I think we have to evaluate all of them. Uh, which ones do we keep, for instance? So, these flagship programs, if you like, should all of them stay? Okay. You do not think so? Our free SHS. Even the finance minister has publicly said that he doesn't believe in the way the free SHS is being run. He said it uh, uh, sometimes. Do you ago. agree with him? Yes. Uh, so why should we be paying for boarding facilities and the rest? If you, so we can uh, shape the free SHS somewhat. Okay. So not all of. So take off some of yeah, the. Yeah. So, so it's a savings. You have a bill, the free SHS bill, 1.9 billion a year. If you can save let's say 400 million a year that's huge for instance uh napco seriously we, we, we pretend to be paying them it's saving unemployed i said we pretend to be paying them they also pretend to be working i i i have advised that pay them uh, some three months severance it was supposed to be a three-year program so why are we still... Uh, it, was, it was extended in December. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Are you going to extend it forever? So some of these school, school feeding... So scrap NAPCO. Oh, yes. School feeding, for example. School feeding. You, do you know how much uh, uh, it's giving uh, to each student? 97 pesos. So let's say uh, you're a caterer and you have a class of... Uh, you cook for 100 students. It means you get 97 seeds mm -hmm. to prepare food for 100 students. But it's not funny. With 97 cities. You understand? 97 yeah. cities. Are you uh, buying uh, uh, gas, utensils, Water. ingredients, the transportation from your home to where the school is? Think about all That's why things. they're asking for three cities. <laughs> yeah, so if you, can't, if you can't afford the three cities, there's no space to do that. So stop pretending to be doing it. Exactly. Even though it is ensuring enrollment. You see, you see that it's 97 pesos. It costs the government 900 million cities a year. So these subsidies, yeah, sir. So ut uh, uh, utilities, water, electricity, they are going to come hard. That are we paying realistic rates? So these are the things that you have to. So it's, it's a government level, and I'm happy to hear the president is going to take charge. So you sit down and say which are the ones that uh, we want to improve upon. Uh, teacher and nursing training allowance. 
It should be scrapped. Oh. It was a campaign message for your party. Yes, there were so many campaign messages that have not been fulfilled. Okay, so it was a campaign message. Your first time, you did it fantastic, uh, fantastically. So, what next? So, remove teacher and nursing training, which is what Muhammad did and lost the election. He didn't lose the election because of that. <laughs> <laughs> how, how have you concluded that he lost because of it? It's part of the reasons. No, I don't think so. Because we're told it's restoration of the allowances. That, that's why I, I, I tell you I will be at the fund the whole time. Yes. Because that's how you can... So that the fund will not let you even do that at no, all. No, it's not that they will not let you do So that then you have the will to carry these ones. There are a lot of people who... So do you think uh, the free SHS, as it's being run now, is good? When I was talking about school fees, my son, my son, my 10-year-old son, he goes to Agape school here. Their feeding fee for a day is 15 cities. It's my son better than the kids in the public schools who are fed on 97 pesos. They pay 15 cities a day for, for, for a decent lunch. So if you can't do it, scrap those kids, when they don't go to school on weekends or on holidays, don't they get food to eat at home? So you think it's yeah, it will save you 900 million cities a year. So scrap school feeding, do something about free SHS. Yes. Deal with NAPCO. That's what NAPCO is gone. Completely gone. Go. What yeah. other thing? National Cathedral? National Cathedral. Yeah, that was not even in the budget, so that one... I, I, so I, you I, don't... I, I because many say. people are angry. I'm speaking to things in the budget. In the budget. If you go to the budget, then there are things that have been listed as flagship programs. Because you are in the hole, okay? Your expenditure fire is your revenue. Your e levy that you said is bringing so much, you couldn't realize the amount. And you're still digging. You haven't been able to uh, scrap the benchmark values. You just gave some 30 percent. So you are in a hole. And you, have, you keep piling on debts and debts. You can, it can't continue forever. And uh, Kufuor, there was presidential special initiatives on a number of projects. Now this government doesn't call it that, flagship. but there's a it's yes flagship. flagship. Yeah. And there's a there's a whole secretariat at the castle that runs the one village one dam. And all those things. That so, planting for food and job, for example, what is it? The Minister for Agri says he's doing excellent. What, is, what I, 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 even me? He said I, I, a, I don't understand it. He said it has led to excess production. Six hundred and forty-one million a year. That's what's in the budget. Six hundred and forty-one. I don't know what it is. You think it's not? It's not I don't know what the program is. It's just, and we didn't campaign on planting for food and jobs. It was one of the numerous campaigns. Oh, it was not in the MPP's it, manifesto. It came later. Yes. So what is planting for food and jobs that you put, apart from the Ministry of Agri's budget, there's something 641 million planting for food and jobs. If you are not ready to cut and cut and cut, there, there's so much cut. Now, if you go to any uh, government agency, I don't know if that, that's a new fashion, three deputy CEOs, two deputy CEOs, everywhere. Some even have for the new development bank has four deputy CEOs. Jobs for Doing the, what? Jobs for the party uh, members. So that's that that's what has created uh, the mess we have. So you would also, if you were the one who was preparing a package for the IMF, you would even talk about slashing. Yeah, expenditure expenditure cuts that we talk about. The minister said that with twenty percent said it has not been realized in a way. If you are not ready to really do the hard uh, take the hard decisions, then forget about this. We are going to IMF, we want to uh, stabilize the economy. You can't do it. So sack people who are currently employed. Well, I would, you, you shouldn't have even employed them to start with. Go to GMPC, three deputy CEOs. The first time we ran GMPC without, uh, without a, a deputy CEOs, three. NHI, three deputy CEOs. Exim, two. Everywhere. That's the new uh, uh, fashion in town. Every government agency has. And do you know how much these people earn? These are not public sector, and, your usual public and the sector. And the fuel they consume. Yes, what are they the doing there? They earn more than the president, some of them. They earn more than the president. These CEOs around, three here, deputy CEO, Minerals so, Commission 2, Forestry Commission 2. What are they doing? Approved all of them. Oh. But you've forgotten that it's a political party that won the election. Those people have to be satisfied. If you don't get things right, if the economy deteriorates, you pay for it eventually at the pools. You go home, all of you, together, completely. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one question. Yeah, you'll be jobless. <laughs> are revenue mobilization efforts in the IMF program? What should we do? So, a levy is struggling. We cannot fix yeah, it, yeah. can we? Our revenue numbers are low. What can we do? We have to really... For example, the, we passed the law when I was chairman of the committee, the Fiscal Electronic Devices Act in 2018. That law says that we'll collect VAT, for example, electronically. That's what I, the law is. So that you have cash registers. Like if you go to a proper... Uh, shop or restaurant. Uh, they, they, the they, swiping thing. No, they print your bill for okay, you. Okay, okay, yes. Uh, yeah. 
so that any uh, firm or any shop that is uh, that charges VAT will have one. Even Tanzania has it. And uh, with all due respect to Tanzania, we, we have not been able. The law was passed in 2018 that we should roll it out four years on. And if I remember how much work went into passing that law, I remember my colleague, uh, one of our colleagues was in uh, the Okuwa's parliament at Abuja. We had to fly him down to come and help. That law is sitting down. So, for example, if we implemented that one, it could bring in about a billion CDs a year. We've been talking about tax exemptions bill. The tax exemptions bill, it was one of the uh, 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 policy actions in the last program. In the last program, the tax exemptions bill, it was one of the policy actions. Together with this electronic battle, we have been passed. Property rates. I've been talking about property rates forever. Nobody pays property rates. We are now fixing the addressing system. Oh, then my after my that, my we'll my do my the... If you like, give me uh, 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 that job to collect property rates. What, what, what addressing system? Don't we know the homes around here? Can't you develop a color coding system and then put all these unemployed graduates to work? Give them tablets? Is this so difficult to do? So we have to work at revenue. I haven't seen serious revenue mobilization efforts. So the uh, low-hanging fruits, e levy, you know, it won't come. That one won't come. But there are revenue measures that people are not complaining about, but which is also bringing money. If you say people should pay property taxes, real estate property, who is complaining? Nobody is complaining, and you are realizing the revenue. You are going to ultimately affect the rent people who are renting, and then that's going to ultimately trigger a problem. Not necessarily. Individual home owners, okay, could be given a different uh, 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 rate as uh, compared to commercial, just as we do for uh, commercial vehicles. U utilities. And, uh, and, so, what, what about the issue of taxing a liter of fuel? It appears that's a convenient place the government has been going. To. Already, there's about one point eight nine, one point nine. Ghana cities on a letter already, already. I, 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 it's an easy target, but I think it uh, should not be touched. Anymore. If you look at how uh, the currency has de uh, depreciated and the consequence thereof and the effect of the war on uh, crude prices, I, I, I don't think um, uh, we, we should touch uh, fuel again. I think there are a few things, uh, uh, tax exemptions. If you tighten it, tax exemptions, you save some five hundred million to. One billion a year tax exemptions. So stop the tax exemptions. Yes, too many exemptions. It is your parliament that has been passing those. No, those exemptions that come to parliament are those ones agreed in contracts. Mm -hmm. So that we, we are building the Accra Bridge Road, so, and the contractor gets an exemption. If you don't give him an exemption, he asks it to the cost. Yeah. But there are exemptions. People go with cheats to the ports. We know those exemptions. Yeah. You, you can clamp that one down. Right? What is wrong with the CD? You have worked at the World Bank of Bank of Ghana before. What's wrong with the CD? You are supposed to stop the city from running. Yeah, um, the fiscal, I told you, okay, the growing debt, the uh, mountain deficits have, have uh, transmitted to, into a, a weak currency. It's been described as a junk currency. Yeah, yeah, that's where we are. But uh, I think, you see, the fiscal authorities and the monetary authorities should be working hand in hand. I, I think that's the uh, level of cooperation hasn't been there. The fiscal authorities have run amok doing their own things, and then now uh, uh, we've seen some of these things happen. What should be done immediately to fix that one? Because it appears that the, the, the currency, it's, it, yeah, it's the exchange rate that is causing a lot of the other problems, because the BDCs are affected by the exchange yeah, rate. Uh, uh, there, are no, there are no short-term fixes. There are no short-term. These are, uh, you see, when you have macro stability, it translates into everything. Once inflation is going up, your currency will deteriorate, interest rates will go up, your debt is mounting, your deficit position is weak. You see, all these. But once you start restoring macro stability, which will be the first pillar of this new program, that restoration of macroeconomic stability, which we've seen. MPP did 4.7% deficit, 4.6%. That's why we're confident passing the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Okay, So you tame the debt. That's why when you exchange some of this expensive borrowing with some of the, these cheap ones, it's good. And then gradually we start retiring some of these uh, uh, debts. And then we, you know, inflation, for example, we will we'll see it go up. The war, the war is persisting. Uh, utility tariffs are going to be increased. So for some time, we'll see some 
uh, inflation in the system. But over time, if we cut down on our borrowing, on our borrowing, on the expenditure, because the expenditure is fueling the borrowing. Mm -hmm. So expenditure cuts, expenditure cuts, expenditure cuts. Then you bring in revenue, more revenue, more revenue, more revenue. So on the one hand, expenditure is going down. Revenue is going up. Yes. You've talked about cutting the expenditure. As we speak, teacher unions have gone on strike. They're asking for cost of living allowance, which is 20% of their salary. Would you approve that if you were? Oh, you, you, you negotiate. And uh, I, I think they deserve, uh, uh, they deserve uh, they, their share too. Uh, uh, salaries have been woefully low in the public sector, uh, I have to admit. So, yes, but you, know, you, you, you negotiate this in, say, a three-year uh, period so that uh, we'll be doing this maybe annually. We can do 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% so okay. that you don't have uh, uh, the public sector can we Can we support that? Can the economy support that? 20% across the board. That's huge. I, I, I didn't agree with the 20%. I said you can do this yeah. over a period. Okay, so, so spread it over. Yeah. People, when they hear IMF, think of conditionalities, and conditionalities sound very harsh. Can we survive that as, as, as a people? That's what I'm saying. Uh, we, uh, the president, will sit together with his team and then see how can, how, how can we cut down expenditure. People have been talking about expenditure cuts. The, the minister says, oh, 20% across, but no, it doesn't work that way. You have to attack the programs. The, this one is going. This one is going. That's, why, you, that's you, why I've cited examples. Have you considered the security implications of the things you are taking off? Like taking off NAPCO. That's one hundred thousand unemployed. When we didn't have, have when we didn't have NAPCO, what happened? Tell me. There was a security threat, and so they've been. So you, you, you think NAPCO has solved? Uh, 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 At least they are getting seven hundred cities a month. Uh, and so he even though they he commutes to work every day. Transport costs. You, you don't take trotro, so you don't do. <laughs> you go to Accra from uh, here and back every day, maybe 15 cities, okay? In, in, in a month, that's about 300 cities. Mm. Other expenses. So that 700 is not doing anything to them. Meanwhile, maybe they still, maybe they don't work. They just collect the money. That's what I said earlier, that we pretend to be paying them. And they also yeah, but I'm just saying that truncating it would lead to problems. But they were told it was going to be a three-year program. Anybody uh -huh. entering... The NAPCO program was going your, to be your, your, The MPP manifesto of 2016 was titled An Agenda for Jobs. You can't come and cut jobs. You see, um, governments have never created jobs. Okay? The public sector jobs, a few of them here and there. But it's the private sector that creates jobs. So when the conditions are right, okay, when people are borrowing cheap, mm, when people are borrowing cheap, 10%, when inflation is low and uh, the purchasing power hasn't lost its value. So macro stability translates into all the things that... Okay. Uh, that's why every government says, it comes in and says, oh, macro stability, macro stability. Yeah. It's a foundation. Yes. This is face to face. I'm talking to someone who, when he lost his primaries, the majority leader at the time wept, not literally, but he was so unhappy. I asked him how he's doing outside parliament now and whether he has plans to go back to parliament and whether he'll take a job as minister for finance. Please stay. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amado. I'm speaking to Dr. Mark Esibe Yeboa, former MP, New Drab in South. When you left Parliament, Oseche Mensa Bosu was unhappy. There was, an, there was a view that there was a cabal of you in Parliament who were anti Nana Kufado and that you were the ones who were removed. Have you heard these things? What do you make of them? Well, I, I, I think I heard the same too, that there was orchestration to get some, not me alone, some people out. But all that I would say is that I'm in a better place now. How? Am I not looking good? <laughs> well, your strength in parliament, I mean, which was, which is seen by everybody when you were in finance, the work you were doing, you and Opari and Abdallah and all of you have left the house. And people were saying that that has weakened the it, house of parliament. It, it, it is the energy I put in whatever I do. When I used to teach in the States, when I was leaving, my head of uh, department, Dr. Boom, in, in, in the US was so sad. When I came to teach at Gimpa, those I've taught and those I work with will tell you. When I, I even left Gimpa to the Bank of Ghana, Gimpa still kept me to teach. I'm sure if you go to a central bank, those I work with at the time to say that, yeah, the work ethic that I bring on board, uh, 
that, that, that's what it is. So, yes, I, I know I've been dearly missed in Parliament, but I did eight years. Uh, when we have term limits for presidencies for eight years. And so if the framers of the Constitution uh, intended to have term limits for MPs too, it would have been eight, eight years, years I, I guess. So, yeah, uh, Jesus Christ did his job in three years and he was gone. So eight years, I think I've done my bit and my name is forever uh, uh, carved there. You don't sound like you plan to go back. No, 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 no. You won't contest again. No, no, never again. <laughs> Is it because... That's uh, not like the IMF, never again. Never, no, 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 <laughs> this is a proper never no, again. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but, but is it true that you were removed by Jubilee House? That's for them to answer. <laughs> what, what have you found out since you left? Tomorrow, I, I don't miss Parliament. Okay, I, I don't. I don't miss Parliament. I, once in a while, the debates... I don't even watch what is happening in Parliament. I, I don't. So, well, maybe somebody intended it for my evil, but it turned out to be for, for, for my good. Your other friend wants to be general secretary. You have not even chosen to run for any position in the party. So, I, I, you... I, I don't know how he does it. He, I know he's around the country. Uh, yeah, but so, uh, we, we speak every day. I think yesterday he was touring Great Accra, and I'm always saying, wow, Opai, <laughs> where do you get the energy to go back to the... Is it that you have hung your political boots? No, no, I... Constituency level politics, that one I'm not doing again. Uh, uh, yeah, running yeah. for MP. But you're not uh, doing national executive too, so you're running for president? Maybe. You have uh, that thought? <laughs> when, when the time comes. But have you, have you been thinking of it? Oh, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from above, okay? So don't live your life. I want to be president, I want to be this, no. Just position yourself, do the things you do. Be candid in, 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 in all that you do. I think that's what that there is. Be candid to me. How has Akufado fared? I think the first term was fantastic, okay? And it translated into a, a, a second uh, victory for him. It, although the, uh, the parliamentary seats uh, decreased and also the vote margin declined to about 500,000. But it's to be expected for a second term. We haven't taken off well in the second term, albeit COVID, the war. But I think two and a half years is a long time for a president. And so we can get things right in the it, next two and a half years. Is he able to crack the whip to your expectations? I haven't been around, you know, he, Jubilee House, I've been there like three times, even when I was chairman of the company. <laughs> I don't know how things, these things, maybe that's my weakness. I don't go around nosing, gossiping, those things that people do in them. I don't. So what it is that they do over there, I don't really know how they... Maybe that's why I didn't see them plotting to remove you. But I said, I'm in a better place now, my brother. You're not, you're not regretting at oh, all? Oh, I'm in a better place now. Hmm? Would you sponsor someone to, replay, to go to parliament from your constituency? No, no, no. My constituency, they will tell you, all those who were my supporters, I told them not to worry their head because I'm not coming back. So they are no, uh, they are no longer. There's part no of, faction. Yeah, part of the polling station. Are you supporting Oshibefi? Oh, recently when they had the regional Election. elections, Eastern Region elections, I, I I hosted the Eastern Region MPs in my house for lunch. So I called him the morning that hey, I want to host your colleagues and I don't want you to read any minutes to me. So if you give me the go ahead, then and then we yeah, agree. Are you anti Nana or Dan Kwakufado? What is he running for? That I am anti. When he was running? Previously? Yes. Oh, no. Are you pro Alan Chermatin? I don't even know where he lives. That's the funny bit. You don't know his house? No. <laughs> Since he's been minister, I've never been to his office. I thought the claim was that you were a Kufour person which spilled over to Kufour Alan. Kufour lives close by. I've never been to his house. My brother, I, do, I don't fight these things, okay? Mm? these rumors and gossips. That's what some of these people thrive on. I don't do those things. You don't seem That's why I'm not going to run again. I want people to know that, oh, this thing that we're fighting him for, he doesn't even cherish it the way you think. Okay? If you cherish it, you lose it. Who's your money on for the MPP flag bearership? Um, we haven't opened nominations. No, I've, but I've, heard, I've heard a few names... Uh, uh, Let's look at the top two. So, Dr. Mahmoud Bomia, Alan Chamatin. Why have we left Kennedy to point out? He just announced like a few weeks ago. So, I want us to deal with the people who have been there for long. Or mm. are you going to support Kennedy Japan? 
Well, they have to convince me. So far, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm listening to all of them. Okay. Kennedy but, says he will make me finance with his Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you, you, but between the two front runners, who is your money on? I think it's early days. Who do you think can help you break the eight? You see, when you get the economy on a sound footing, the eight can be broken yeah, by anybody. Okay. Who would you trust the economy with in the in the third term of an MPP government? I think you see, you, you have to surround yourself with uh, uh, strong minds. It's not about the person. Okay, so if you, for example, I'm an economist. If, if I'm, I'm finance minister, for example, I might not have strength in capital markets. So maybe I get somebody who's strong there, somebody who's an accountant as another deputy in tax administration, you know? So if you're a president, you just have to surround yourself with strong people who can tell you the truth. Is Nana Akufado surrounded with strong people, I smart think, people? Oh, uh, it would be unfair on my part to say that he's not surrounded himself. Because last time he appointed Dr. Akutor says as, as his economic advisor in this second year. Yes. He's been ill, so, but yeah. Do you think Akutor says should have been Minister of Finance? Do you think so? Oh, let's not get into the pe personalities. You don't want to do that. Yeah, because then uh, you are pushing me to say that uh, um, the current finance minister should, shouldn't have been finance minister. Do you think he should be finance minister currently continuing into an IMF program? Oh, those are the prerogatives of the president. If, it, if, if he sees... What's your fit. view? You see, in 2015, um, my friend said Tepe didn't want the fund program. And so uh, the president forced it on him, just the same arrangement. So when we're going for the fund negotiations, President Mahama nominated Dr. Kwesibuke to lead the negotiations. Okay? Because if you put out um, statements, and then the fund, any, every morning there's somebody sitting in Washington who is in charge of Ghana. Monitoring. The, he just types Ghana IMF. So anywhere that IMF has been mentioned in Ghana the previous day to pop up. So they have screenshots of all our yes. insults. So, and there's one being it for Nigeria. So every morning they get whatever has been said about the IMF. Uh, it means the, that if Ken, if Ken goes there, they will show him screenshots. Uh, I would think so. You don't think he should lead us, should he? No, that's what, that. um, well, the president says he's going to lead negotiations. I saw it in yeah. the Daily Guide yeah. today. So it means the president himself is leading the, uh, uh, negotiations here. But when you go to Washington, you know, if he goes to Washington, and that's why I'm saying, let us watch our language in okay. some of these things. Because this is my last question to you: What do you think this IMF thing is going to do to the credibility of the vice president? Has any, uh, what has happened to his credibility? Just the decision to go to IMF. You see, uh, in our conversation, I told you that going to the IMF is not a bad thing. But considering the rhetoric around it's, not it's, going it's, in the past. Well, um, some of these have not been his creation. He didn't uh, an anticipate the, the war. He didn't know that we were going to be hit with a pandemic. So we, uh, we, we have to cut him some slack. What are you doing in retirement? Are you farming or you are fishing or you are no, um, producing babies? I've been, I've been writing here and there and I'm trying to get back to teach. Uh, Gempa offered me a class last year, but... I declined in the last week because I wasn't really ready. But you'll uh, go back to the so, classroom. Uh, yeah, um, maybe in September, uh, if, if they offer me a course. Yeah. But I don't want the heavy, heavy courses. I want something small. <laughs> Doc, we wish you all the best. And thank you for yeah, speaking yeah, to us. Yeah, thank you too. That's Dr. Mark Ezebe Yebo. He's former MP for New Job and South, one-time chairman of the Finance Committee of Parliament. My name is Umaru Sandamadu. Thank you for watching. Please stay with us.